Five modern car features I could live without. The one million different freaking beeping sounds on startup. Stop trying to sound like some Boeing airliner. I don't think planes are cool when they make all these beeping noises, so I don't think cars are cool when they do it either. The extra insult to injury is also the one million different yes and no's that also accompany these beeping sounds that you have to deal with every single time you start up your car. I also hate all the pretentious detail that goes into the thought process of these beeping noises. Some try to sound luxurious and a little more muted or have a little noise was somehow for bah, bah, and then, like it doesn't matter it or the da 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 that Ford does I don't care they all suck none of them sounds more luxurious than the others whether it's a fr my stupid freaking idiot Lexus or the normal GM sound or the dumb Ford Mustang sound that I had to deal with or the absolute soundless stuff that I had to deal with my turnkey Nissan Sentra in that sense my Sentra was probably the best in that regard I miss that Sentra <laughs> Idle rev limiters on a performance car. This is another dumb feature. Why would I want an idle rev limiter on a performance car? Like, I get having a limit at red line, whether that's a spark cut or a fuel cut or whatever you want to do to accomplish it, because you're trying to stop dumb idiot morons from money shifting, whether it's an automatic or manual, because most Americans these days don't even understand that gears are even a thing, whether you give them a paddle shift or a traditional manual, they're probably going to money shift it, so it's better to put rev limiters in those. However, at idle you would think they would still have the rev limiter at the red line but for some reason a lot of companies and again this is on performance cars too they'll put the rev limiter like halfway down the red line when you're at idle and they say it's to prevent the engine from blowing up because you really shouldn't be revving a car when it's sitting still but at the same time I mean come on you, they should know what type of people are buying their cars it's a sports car or performance car or muscle car or whatever you want to call or whatever you specifically bought the point point is the people who buy those cars want to make dumb idiot stupid noises even when sitting still so let us make said dumb idiot noises when sitting still and if we blow up our engines while doing so that's just god's justice to our stupidity but that's not going to change the fact that people still aren't going to chance that regardless the next one no physical handbrake parking or emergency brake why why are there so many electric parking brakes in cars now? Electric ones weigh more, they brake more, they're more expensive to repair, and they don't even look cool. It's just a complete bleh, you know, it's just totally flat there. It completely bugs and disturbs me. And the only thing more insulting than, actually, you know, I would rather have a foot brake. Like, you know what I mean? Like a third, like, an you know where your clutch would be on a manual car? Well, some companies decided it's a great idea to put a handbrake. Well, it's not a handbrake anymore because you hit it with your foot, but they put the e-brake slash parking brake there I would still rather have that than like an electronic one and unfortunately we're three for three right now because all these features I've just discussed are on my current vehicle I just like regular handbrakes they just look so much cooler not only they look so there's just so much easier just you pull it up you put it down you can see when it's pulled up you can see when it's pulled down electronic ones whether it's up or down it's the same placement you actually have to look at your dash to see whether it's up or not and that's not what bugs me it's just the fact that some of these don't even let you use them as actual emergency brakes anymore like if you actually experience a loss of control they don't do anything they're just like no use your regular brake dummy and then you'll pull on it and nothing will happen so I can't even count on these to save my life because most of them serve more as glorified parking brakes and they do actual emergency brakes whereas a normal handbrake does all three it's a handbrake it's a parking brake and it's an emergency brake the only reason modern cars are even getting rid of these is because they have this really stupid obsession with wanting to smooth out the center console region and try to get rid of any object that protrudes upwards. For example, they're starting to remove a lot of shift knobs as well as handbrakes. And speaking of removing shift knobs or shift levers, that's the next entry on this list. Get this spinny dial crap out of here, whether you put this on our center console or whether you put this on the freaking, I don't care where you put it, it sucks. You know like what old Chrysler minivans had where it's like it almost looks like a blinker right but that would actually shift the car yeah i would rather have that than because that's still a lever at least i would rather have that than a stupid knob that you did like i want my shift lever something about cars without having a shift knob or shift lever in the interior it just makes me really sad like you just look at it and it just looks so ridiculously empty what are you even gonna put there anyways like extra cup holders yeah because a two-seater car needs more than two cups holders like does it really save any space no 
It doesn't. It's a freaking aesthetic choice. An aesthetic decision made by manufacturers to look more sleek and futuristic. But all I see is a soulless void that all of us car enthusiasts are headed straight towards in the coming decades as cars begin to shed more and more of their driving identity in favor of sleek, futuristic, wannabe BS. Hopefully my schizophrenia rots my brain into mush before then. That way I don't have to be around to see all this crap happen, or at the very least not be conscious enough to understand what's happening. Like, even if it's an automatic car, there's just something about having a shift lever and just, you know, just moving it up and down. Even, like, the silly, goofy ones that have, like, the plus-minus symbols that, like, you know, like, BMWs have, like, not quite a, yeah, like, I guess an SMG is one style of it, but some DCTs still have it. And you just smack it up and down into the plus and minus. That still gives me that little dopamine kick, you know, more than my freaking Abilify medication does, but it's nice. I like it. And then even if it doesn't have that and all you have to work with is just a PRND, maybe an S for sport mode, I still like going through DNS. Even without the DNS, it's just nice to put the car from park to drive sometimes. It's just force a habit. You start the car, you put your keys in it. Actually, most cars don't even have you turn keys anymore. Who am I kidding? You know what I mean, though. You, oh, God, that's tragic, too, when I really think about it like that. But you get in the car, and you put the car from park into reverse, back out of the spot, then you put it into drive. You don't move the shift knob again until you park where you get to. But hey, that, that those four simple little shifts, that still matters to me. That still mattered to me. Not having anything at all and just having a freaking knob that you turn instead. Nah, nah, that ain't, that ain't the same. That just ain't the same. The final entry on this video is fake exhaust noise. I don't need a speaker blaring computer predetermined noise that's based on my RPM. I want my actual engine to make said noise. Now the whole point of fake exhaust noise is so the driver can hear it, but not those outside around them. Now people say this is to stop noise pollution, but meanwhile we have lawnmowers, mopeds, motorcycles, airliners flying overhead, some dude named Kyle in the woods smashing a monster energy drink, all of which are substantial louder than car exhaust while also all being heard on a daily basis. So that whole argument definitely falls apart very quickly, especially in regards to mopeds and motorcycles because they are extremely much much louder than cars and I get that they kind of have to because that's your only way of seeing them. But again, those are also on the road on a daily basis that you're also exposed to. So by limiting cars and not limiting them, you've not accomplished anything. You know, it's just hypocrisy. Sound isn't something that's just heard, it's felt too. Whether it's speakers or whether it's just tubing something through the cold air intake or tubing something from the engine bay into the cabin to try to make it sound artificially louder, it's something that we can still tell it's fake. Especially for most car enthusiasts, we understand what we should be feeling. The rumbling of an engine as it vibrates underneath through the mid pipe and literally travels like I can literally feel my firing order travel beneath my seat every single time I'm just sitting at a stoplight when it's just idling back and forth. Just I just count with it and that's kind of a problem actually. I think that I'm too in tune with how my car sounds but and then especially when you actually get on the throttle let off and you just feel that little crackle and you feel it come through the engine through underneath your seat through the mid pipe and out through your axle back exhaust and through the exhaust tip and you just either feel a backfire or you just feel a little crackle that just tickles you and just shakes your car slightly just a little little tickle you know it's just the right amount of dopamine just the perfect injection of serotonin just ooh, ooh, like oh you know like yo f these meds i've got a v8 that's my medication right there a lot of people usually cannot tell that difference or probably are not that in tune with how their car sounds but for most car enthusiasts we can so don't try to keep telling us oh well don't worry in the future they might put like speakers on teslas and stuff that's not the same all right that's that's not the same I fear the day where we'll be surrounded by fakes, frauds, and replicas of what we had in the past going forth into the future. I got into cars to escape all the fake sh that surrounded my life and now I'm gonna be surrounded by it again. Ugh, I promise I'm not going through a sad boy phase, maybe I should take my medication after all anyways, that's gonna be it for this video. If you enjoyed this video or like cars and car content or garbage list videos, make sure to subscribe. If you want actual good content, well I'm sorry, turns out no one else on this channel does so you're gonna have to watch my vlogs and hope and pray that uh, it somehow boosts it in the algorithm. Yeah, see y'all next time, Blade Angel out, thanks for watching. I, oh crap, I didn't finish this video with Bladed Angel out like I usually do. You know, should I even keep doing that? I don't think I will. We're just gonna end it mid.